Hi guys, this is SDJR Senef88 speaking with the first of my Signals Models review series featuring the all new GWR64XX from Batman. Now, Batman announced these models back in their 2013 2014 range, much to the delight of many GWR fans. They have just started arriving in stores. Signals models have just received the first two uh, versions, the first being in GWR Green, and the second, this one here, being in VR Early Black. I'll put a link in the description below to both of those on their website, so you can click on their website and uh, you know, purchase them from there. Uh, as you can see, the product code is 31-636, class 64XX pannier tank, uh, 6417 BR Black Early Emblem. Now, Signal's price is £70 and 60, uh, £76 pounds and 50 pence, which is very, very reasonable indeed for these locos. As you know, Batman have had a lot of price changes recently. There's been some substantial increases due to manufacturing costs in China, among other things. And uh, basically, um, the 64XX was part of these price r rises. I think the original RRP when it was announced was around you know 70 pounds, but this um, over, but when the price increases hit, this shot up to about 80 pounds. And uh, Batman recently announced their 2015-2016 range on uh, a couple of days ago, and the price then increased again, which is when Signals got their delivery. So the price had to be increased because uh, when the delivery was sent out from Batman, it was sent out after the price rise again. Uh, so um, this price is very, very, very reasonable indeed compared to their new prices. I know that um, online uh, manif um Online businesses have also had to put their prices up recently because of this price increase. So Signal's, uh, Signal's price here is about nearly £10 cheaper than the RRP, which is very good indeed. Anyway, if we turn on the model onto its back, what I love about Batman models is they give you a brief history about the class uh, in general on the back of the box. Now, as we can see here, it says brief history, the class 64XX or 6400. Um, as it is uh, mentioned in the in the text here, uh, the first introduced uh, in to service with the GWR or Great Western Railway in 1932, the 6400 class is an evolution of the classic GWR pannier tank family, with its basic design dating back almost 60 years previous. Charles Collett reworked the classic design for the 21st century, for the tw 21st century, 20th century, sorry. Uh, the 6400 was built for a specific purpose, working push-pull passenger trains. These were also referred to as auto trains. Now, for those of you who don't know what auto, an auto train is, an auto train is basically a specially adapted coach, which uh, could be connected to an auto-fitted locomotive, like the 64XX here. And basically the driver could get out when the engine got to the end of the line and rather than having to run the engine around to the other end of the coach and couple on, uh, the driver could just simply get out and get into the specially adapted coach which had tended to have glass ends and basically operate the loco while the fireman was on the footplate from inside that coach which was a really really clever idea indeed and basically, you know, basically it was like a steam version of a DMU. Uh, so yeah. Uh, this method of operation was more effective as it avoided the need for the loco to be uncoupled at the end of each, uh, tra each train's journey, saving time and money. The 6400 was a small batch built dating from 1932 to 1937, eventually, do uh, eventually totaling 40 locomotives, numbered from 6400 to 6439. With the introduction of DMUs in the early 60s, all were, all were withdrawn from BR used by, um, used by 1964. The uh, free uh, 6400 uh, uh, were locomotives have been preserved uh, it, for use on heritage lines in the UK, including 6412, which ironically I saw a couple of uh, weeks back at the South Devon Railway. And that was its first run, um, if you've seen that video, that was its first run uh, since its overhaul. So it's a real lovely uh, treat to see that locomotive. And that locomotive there, 6412, is the third variant that Batman are producing, which has not yet been released, which is going to be in BR, um, BR uh, Late Green, which is as she is preserved in at the moment. And um, basically has the early style cab, because these locos had, certain, uh, had uh, an early style cab and then also had a modified cab. But um, the model, the third model, is going to be as preserved, so as 6412 as preserved. And I know that model is very, very, going to be very popular indeed. Such a lovely loco in both model form and in real life. So anyway, without further ado, I think we will take off the outer packaging and have a bit of a closer look at the model inside. So uh, be right back in a second. 
Right, so uh, here's the model out of the outer box. Uh, in the tray here we have the standard Batman paperwork, which uh, basically is the instruction manual for the locomotive, the uh, spares parts list, and of course um, a form for the Batman Collectors Club if you wish to join. Uh, so I won't go into that into too much detail, it's pretty much standard with all Batman uh, locomotives. Then of course we have the model itself encased in its block of ice packaging. You know, I really do like this packaging, it really is very handy indeed for getting the locos uh, in and out and it keeps them nice and safe. Uh, on the top we have the um, detailing pack, the separately fitted details. Now there's quite a variety in there for this little model. We have two uh, free link chain couplings, one for the front, one for the back. We also have two what look like vacuum pipes, uh, one for the front, tall red one, and uh, a little one for the back. I think that's the correct, correct way around, it might be the other way around, I do not know. Uh, but what's quite interesting is there is also some little separate lamp irons in there. Now I suppose those are replacement ones for ones on the front, I do not know, but it's quite interesting uh, um, for Batman to include that. I think it's the first time that I've seen uh, that um, them added as a separately fitted detail, so yeah, we're um, quite interested to see where those go. Anyway, uh, looking at the model itself through the uh, packaging, you know, it really does look lovely indeed. That lovely BR Black. Um, really really nice and if we look at from the front there we can see some of the details are starting to shine through already so I think without further ado we better get her on the track and have a closer look at her so uh, be right back in a moment right uh, here she is on the layout and Batman have really done a superb job at capturing the prototype in model form very well indeed there is detail plenty on her featuring both separately fitted and molded details as we know, there's been a lot of controversy regarding moulded details lately, but I really feel that Batman have pulled it off on this model, as we'll see in uh, a bit more detail when it comes to looking at those parts uh, later on in this review. So without further ado, we will take a look at the uh, front of the model. As can be seen, the front of the prototype has been captured very well indeed. Starting off with the smoke box door itself, we have the running number 6417, and below that the smoke box dart which is completely separately fitted. Below that we have the shed plate code which is 86i. Sadly I'm not up to date on my shed codes so if any of you know what uh, shed this loco would have been allocated to please do leave a comment in the comment section below. Moving on down to the running plate we have the separately fitted lamp irons there and then below that we have the buffer beam itself which is absolutely covered in rivet detail. Now the buffers are non-sprung Though they are metal, personally I think this is a great idea as there is not much point to sprung buffers and they really do add to the overall cost of the, man the manufacturing cost of the model in the first place. In the centre of the buffer beam there we have a hole which is for the separately fitted detail supplied in the detailing pack as seen earlier on. I believe this is for the free link uh, chain link coupling there. Moving on to the side of the loco, we'll start off at the bottom and work our way to the top. As can be seen, the detail continues along the underside with various pipework, the sandboxes and of course the brake rigging which continues along the whole length of the model. The wheels are very fine indeed as is the linkage and as can be seen there's some more beautiful uh, fine pipework there. Then as can be seen here we have the auto gear. Now this is of course um, very iconic on this loco as all these locos were fitted with this. That uh, box there would have allowed the uh, loco to uh, be operated from the auto coach via the driver with the fireman on the foot plate. Uh, so that's where the uh, mechanism from the coach would have been connected to, to the loco to allow the driver to operate the controls from inside the coach. Um, Batman has done a very good job in capturing this. It's quite well uh, hidden underneath the actual frame itself, around by the coupling socket, uh, but it's been very well uh, picked out there indeed. Moving up onto the running plate, as can be seen, there's a, especially to the left by the buffers there, we have some very fine little pipework, which is actually you know, built into the actual frame itself, uh, which is quite surprising really, because the, the actual running plate of the model is die cast. So it would have been very fine um, molding indeed to um, allow that pipework uh, on there. As can be seen on the front, there is plenty more there, um, which has really, really been well captured indeed, considering that is made out of metal. Of course, this gives the mo uh, the loco a really, really good weight indeed, which does give it a good, a lot of tractive effort. 
uh, in other reviews in like uh, Hornby Magazine and Model Rail uh, and, B and the BRM, it's been rumoured this loco has been pulling uh, up to 10 coaches, which is very surprising indeed, although the prototypes would have hauled nowhere near that. Moving on to the side of the tank, we have, of course, uh, the British Rail Early Emblem. And as you can be seen, the text is fully legible there, British Railways. As well as the uh, flush um, finish on the side of the tank, so we of course have the handrails, which have, are of course separately fitted. If we move up onto the top, we have plenty of detail there, uh, both moulded and separately fitted. There are lots of rivets on there, lots of little, um, you know, sort of joins and different things that were, which are of course are on the prototype. We have the uh, filler, water filler caps there, uh, the dome. Um, sorry, the camera is going out of uh, focus. Uh, there we are, it's better. Um, as can be seen there, we got there's lots of the rivet detail there, and all these little um, hatches and stuff. It's quite interesting that the uh, top of this loco is completely flat compared to other Pannier tanks, which sort of had sort of the circumference of the boiler sort of showing through. And uh, above the firebox here, we have the uh, safety valve, and then we have the whistles. Uh, now the whistles are moulded, uh, I believe. They are not uh, turned metal as seen on some uh, previous models. I think the previous Pannier tanks, um, like the uh, 8750, I think that had turned metal ones. I, I may be wrong, but um, as can be seen here, they're moulded. But um, I think they look just as good as turned metal ones. You know, it keeps the cost down, and of course, you know, they look they look like what they're supposed to do, which is of course perfect. Moving on to the cab. Now, this, I believe, is the earlier um, version of the cab. Uh, now, I'm, I'm not, don't hold me to that, but there are, were these, um, the 64X, uh, 64XX did carry a number of different cabs. I believe this is the early design. If not, if I'm wrong, I'll put a, a little uh, pop-up on the bottom of the screen now. But it does look like it's separate to the actual uh, boiler moulding itself, which means this gives Batman the op option to produce uh, the other variant with a separate, with a different type of cab at a later date. If we move on to the side, we can see into the cab there, um, just about. I'm sorry, the lighting is terribly, uh, really terrible up here, and uh, really at the wrong angle. But there is a really good amount of cab detail in there. You can just about see it. The camera's not focusing on it. It's focusing on the beautiful rivet detail on the outside of the cab. If I zoom in a tiny bit more, it might. Um, it's trying to. But there is plenty of cab detail in there. Ah, there we go. It's all separately painted. It's all painted as well. Very finely painted. So uh, I suppose you could unscrew the uh, body and add a crew in there. And that would look absolutely excellent. Onto the side of the cab itself we have plenty of rivet detail and of course we have the running number again 6417 now that would look absolutely excellent I suppose you get separately fitted um, uh, etched plates to fit over that though the uh, printed uh, plate on there does look r uh, pretty good as it is now if we move on to the rear of the loco the bunker here we have the um, beautiful hooks there which could be used to support like little sand buckets uh, and of course the uh, fireman's tools, all separately fitted of course and I believe that's all made from metal. Then below that we have some moulded lamp irons. Now we have seen moulded lamp irons on other models um, and um, you know, some people don't like them, some people do. But uh, Batman have decided to mould these ones, which I don't think is um, you know too you know, too bad. They look pretty good on there. You know, it keeps the cost down, and of course you just simply just glue some lamps on there um, if need be. Then we move on to the rear buffer beam, and of course we have loads of um, more rivet detail on the buffer itself, and of course some uh, slots there for more separately fitted detail uh, details, including the uh, free another free chain link uh, coupling. And of course the vacuum pipe and uh, the pipe which would be used again for the auto gear, I believe, uh, which is also in the pack. Moving back up onto the top, we have the uh, a normal standard coal load, you know, moulded, not too bad. Uh, but of course you can replace it with a, a real coal load, uh, coal load, sorry, if need be. And then finally we have the top of the cab. Uh, if the camera does focus, I'm gonna have to zoom out here. Very sorry. Very sorry about the little jump there, we, uh, I had some real trouble with the camera focusing. But as we can see, the, the roof hatch on the Loco is of course moulded, but um, nevertheless, it looks pretty good. We've also got some more rivet detail there, and as we also have the separate little uh, pipe there as well. So all very good indeed. 
Now, of course, um, all that's left to do is to give the model a quick little uh, test run. So I'll be right back in a moment. Right, uh, being a signals review, the test run won't be as extensive as seen in my other reviews. It will just simply be a little back and forth um, run on the straight there. Um, straight from how she is in the box. So she's not been running in any way at all. This is literally how she is at the box. She's not moved. So um, let's see how it goes. So I'm just going to turn the control, give her a bit of juice. Wow. Now that's a very smooth pull away for a model that hasn't ran ran in yet. Straight out of the box. That is absolutely superb. There's point work there. She goes over the point work. No trouble. Just slow her down. Stop her there. Flip her into reverse. Oh, wow, another smooth pull away. Now, Batman uh, models, particularly steam locos, the diesel seem to be fine, but um, particularly their steam locos, sometimes um, are not the best of runners, uh, especially when they're straight out of the box. They require a longer than average run in, and sometimes even then they still they still are a bit sticky. But um, the 64XX here, as can be seen, has no trouble whatsoever. It runs like a dream. Slow it down there. Switch the other direction. Look at that. Not even a judder. That is absolutely superb. I'm sure with a good half hour run in, she'd be a really, really smooth runner indeed. I mean, she's very quiet now as it is. Just bring her to a stop here. Right. I guess that's all that's left to do now is to do the ratings. So I'll uh, pause the camera here again and I'll be right back in a moment. Well, Batman really have done a superb job with the 64XX. You know, brilliant detail, really captured the prototype very well indeed. And that superb running from the box. So, what do I rate it? Packaging, 9 out of 10. Standard Batman uh, Ice Cube packaging, you know, easy to get the model out of and of course put it back in if need be. Uh, detail, 9.5, really high level of detail there. A few little moulded details, but that's, you know, to keep cost down. But overall, an absolutely superbly detailed model indeed. Performance, well, from that little, just little back and forth there, I can safely say 10 out of 10. She's absolutely flawless. I would love to see how she would run after a good sort of a 30 minute run in. That, you know, just from that little run there, she really, really did, did run well. So overall, I've got to give this model a 10 out of 10. It's absolutely amazing. Batman really, really you know, pulled another corker out of the books here. It's absolutely brilliant. And I look forward to seeing some of their more future locos. As we know, Batman have been having a lot of uh, price changes lately, but I can safely say that, you know, she is worth every penny. Of course, great value at Signals Models. Again, the links to the page to where you can purchase these from on their website, and of course, Signals website uh, itself is in the description below. I'd also like to say a big, big thank you to Signals Models for allowing me to review this superb model for them. And I must say, um, I am very, very tempted indeed. So you never know. Um, I, of course, this model will, be re will shortly be returning to Signals Models, but um, I think it will probably be um, you know, going there and then coming straight back <laughs> because I, I think that the model has won me over as well. So um, anyway... I hope you enjoyed this review and I'm sure there'll be more Signals reviews to come. Please do tell me what you've uh, thought of this review and of course the model itself. So I guess that's all that's left for me to do is to say um, this has been SDJR Senef 88 speaking and uh, thanks for watching.